Hello, dear friends. This is Kardec Radio at 11 p.m. And here we are with hope and light. Another day in which we have the treasure of the Spiritist messages given to us by the wonderful spirits that came through Chico Xavier to teach us about the beauty of hope. In the preface of this book, Hope and Light, we see a manual telling us about hope. And I'm going to quote from the preface since we are at the introduction of our program today. Hope is the stimulus with which divine providence marked the growth and the elevation of life. Hope is the force of understanding and waiting. Understanding and waiting. Of course, waiting, there isn't much we can do but wait. But to wait, we need to understand. And that's why we're here. To have greater hope, we need light. To understand. To understand means to illuminate what is not understood so it clarifies it as he says the light clarifies the ways we must go so their free will can act with the responsibility of our choices emmanuel wrote this preface in march of 1993 and later in the very same compilation the book there is a message we're going to read today titled To Obtain, in which so coherently he brings it all back. It's fascinating to observe the coherence and the consistency of these illuminated minds. A measure of higher minds. You know, when you study the hierarchy of spirits in the Spirits book by Allan Kardec, we get to know just a didactic way to see the classification. There are pure spirits in which the good is all there is already. They already understand God and they are the co-creators of greater level, as Andre Lewis points out in the book Evolution into Worlds. And then there is, there are the pure, the good spirits, good spirits in which the good is greater than ignorance. They are greatly experienced and some are wiser, others are more benevolent, some are both before they become the pure spirits like Jesus. The good spirits like Chico Xavier and St. Francis, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, etc. And then us, the imperfect spirits, just meaning that we are perfectible, right? And there are subclassifications just so we understand the nuances of it all. Why is this important? Maybe ask, but well, Vanessa, I'm suffering. I don't care about this classification. No, you care. You know why? Because we need to understand why we're suffering. Otherwise, suffering is not going to go away by itself. Some people think, oh, you know what? I don't care. I don't need to understand anything. Let life be what it is. No, but then at the end of the day, it's going to make a difference. If we apply ourselves because we have free will at human level and we have consciousness, we need to put consciousness into everything. And the higher spirits, they're very consistent. They're very accountable, reliable, and coherent. Mentor Joseph, in 2012, brought to us a psychography when we were at the Spirit Society of Virginia, and we keep it as the, the go of Kardec Radio. He titled it Coherence. We publish in one of the issues of the Spiritist magazine. It's a short message, but it's our goal to aim at coherence. This week, as we were at the Spirit Society of Virginia, working on our mediumistic meeting, Mentor Joseph and other spirit kindly brought to us the importance of coherence. 
we need to be coherent. And some people think that it's about the spiritual works. No, it's all about our daily lives. We need to be coherent. It's going to be impossible for us to cultivate addictions from sexual addictions, which include watching porn, which include womanizing, which include flirting, sensuality, addictions of drugs, addictions in terms of any bad habit, of course, addiction in our bad habits. And why we're saying this? Because cultivating those parts is not coherent with the goals that you and I have embraced in this spiritual goal. Some people say, come on, forget about this. It's just a little bit, but that's not coherent. So we are just like uh, an Olympian athlete who worked hard day and night to become excellent. The good spirits are sharing with us that we are to achieve the excellence of the soul, but it is on us to apply ourselves so we get there. That's why we have a guided model, Jesus Christ in the book, Hope and Light, has its first chapter, the greatness of our guided model. He is the coach of our souls. He is the one we are to emulate. Why not? What a beautiful program. It just feels rejuvenating. It feels youthful. You wake up and think, oh, I'm being invited to work on my shortcomings and getting to another record just like an athlete of the soul. Shall we, friends? I see here, Teresa Castro, Amanda Andrade, John De Rosa, Karina Alice. If I don't see everybody, I just see some because they have their comments here. So feel free to comment or ask a question during the program as well. It's an inter interactive way of studying together. But what is Emmanuel going to tell us today? He said, hope as a divine stimulus pointing to progress. And hope depending on understanding and waiting, basically. And he says, light clarifies so we can take responsibility in the use of our free will. Today, he's going to talk about those things. He's going to talk about the fact that we often receive a lot of things. The thing is, what are we doing with those things? Are you ready? Ready, set, and go to obtain. Many pray while crying. And many smilingly receive the concessions they request from the, the celestial power. However, we must not forget the commitments that the divine gift involves in itself. In ordinary life, we compete for a position of service, not only to earn the salaries that concern us, but also to work, living up to the wage earned. A simple plant receives from the gardener special care, not only to adorn the landscape, but also to produce, valuing the sweat and the barn. It is therefore indispensable to meditate on the responsibilities of the blessings we treasure. We pray to heaven for the prerogative of health and physical balance that enriches our existence. Yet the day will come when divine accounting will examine our experiences. We intend to dignify the personality with titles that adapt us to the social condition and the unattainable forces of the higher spheres help us 
in a thousand ways in their acquisition. However, the time will come when we will be called upon to report on the edifying usage of the opportunity granted to us. It is fair to always ask, and it is natural to always receive more. However, the wise and just law lurks on the footsteps of mo and motions of which, if there is time to be borrowed, there is also time to repay. Let us then see what we make of the riches of light, expressing ourselves in the renewing and comforting faith that today supports our destinies. Yesterday, before the present evolutionary roaming, we were orphans of peace and security, wandering in the maelstrom of shadows to which we relegated our own spirit through many centuries of delinquency. But the Lord, by pointing out our supplications, reformed our working titles in favor of our own improvement. We are privileged servants with valuable loan of sublime talents. Let us therefore refrain from wasting time and let us attack the task to which we are to fulfill, which we are to fulfill. Today shines the opportunity to help, to learn, to love, to forgive, to sublimate, and to redeem. Let us not forget, however, that the hours fly by in a hurry and that tomorrow the law will come to collect provided service because to obtain it on earth or in heaven requires rendering and redeeming. Mamma mia, Daisy, what a message, right, my friend? Hello, Daisy. Hello, Carol Correa. So, friends, this is a conversation from the adult to the adult. Before we go back to the message, let us breathe in and out and understand what is this voice that is talking to us? Emmanuel comes not as a parent that is criticizing us, not as a parent that is pampering us, doesn't come as a child saying, please help me. No, he comes as an adult. An adult that knows the facts, the laws, the objectives. Everything since Christ calls us to strengthen the adult in us. But majority of the day, we oscillate. And often, we tend in our relationships to be the child, still rebellious, sometimes passive-aggressive or really actively aggressive. Or we tend to be sensitive. People say stuff and we are love. And or the critical parent, this is wrong, that's right, do this, do that, or nurturing. But the adult, says Eric Byrne, in transactional analysis, a beautiful way of understanding how we relate to ourselves and one another, to understand the inner voices, the voices of one another, to have better relationships. And he discovered that we will, we will do well when we strengthen the adult. And that's what Jesus came to do, to be human, is to be the adult, to be the adult in which I see clearly the facts, the understanding, and I work with them. Forgiveness is all about the adult. Everything we're seeing here today in this message by Emmanuel is boosting the adult in us. But he's talking about facts. 
He's saying, God is wonderful, very merciful, very, very generous. None of us will ever top the generosity of God. Of course, he's our creator. He gives and gives and gives and gives. And we receive and receive. But, says Emmanuel, we don't receive to do nothing. We're co-creators. God is not demanding because he says, come on, I gave you this, you need to give me that. No, 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 that's not God. That's us, the poor us that are the critical parents that are still patty. God's not patty. God is not saying, come on, give me. I gave you one, you, you need to give me two. No, no, no. God is saying, I believe in you. I created you for beautiful things. I give you health. Go, multiply that talent, and then you use health to love people, to serve, to produce, to take care of family, to take care of the neighbors, right? But if I use health, and forgive me for saying this, but only the mentors know why we have to say this. Don't feel uncomfortable. This is just an adult conversation. But if I use my health and throw it out of the window by eating poorly, by having sex without meaning, um, by using drugs, etc., partying, slandering, consequences will come. In the previous chapter, we were studying a message by the Spirit Jair Presente, when he was saying about abortion, the consequences of it all. For every action, there's a reaction. I mean, it's a fact. And, and of course, children have a hard time understanding facts. If you tell them about certain things, they're like, oh my gosh. But when we are the adults, we take it. And, and, and it's not the adult of the body, it's adult of the mind. Because there are children that understand better the ins and outs of life than many adults. It's about spiritual maturity. We can't escape from it. And Emmanuel is saying, he says, many people pray in the form of crying. Like, oh, help me. That's so hard. And many receive the gift smiling. But he says, we can't, we must not forget. It's interesting, the choice of words here. The way he phrases it, it's very strong. It's not only you can't, it's like, it's a no-no. We must not forget the commitments that the divine gift involves in itself. After all, we are co-creators. How do you feel yourself being co-creators? Let's feel the scripture. I mean, no matter the words we're reading here, Emmanuel is boosting the feeling in us. He is reminding us we are active co-creators. How do you think you are doing in regards to being a co-creator? Excited that you co-create? Yes, and that doesn't mean to have children. No, no, no. Co-create means I am right now, you are there, and you're using your vitality to be here, to instruct yourself like myself. That's a choice that is beneficial. We're co-creating what? Instruction, to say the least, besides the affection that we exchange in the vibratory level of the, our connection here, right? So we can't forget that there is a commitment, meaning we're co-creators. Parable of the talents, I receive. Now it's my turn to multiply it. Well, that's the law of life, law of work. We need to be useful. And at human level, we can do it consciously. So how do you feel by being a co-creator? Hmm? And 
Chico Xavier has a message that uh, he channeled from Emmanuel. I think it's Emmanuel. Trust always. As far as I remember, I apologize. In which he says, the beauty of how we are accountable in God's works, how we are expected as well to join in the expansion of God's love. It's so real. And then he says here for us, therefore, it is indispensable to meditate on the responsibilities of the blessings we treasure. Okay, he talks about titles. People are like, oh, I want to become a doctor in something. I want to do this course. I want to, I want a new car and I want a family and I want, and he's saying, what are you doing with it? These are not acquisitions for you to keep forever. They are gifts that are given temporarily. So we co-create. Not even in a spirit center. The works that we do are true concessions for the redemption of our soul. If we embrace the task with all of our love and dedicate ourselves, we will be co-creating coherently, consistently, and marching towards excellence. But if I simply do things in the half good mood, as one of the messages by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier says, published in the Spiritist magazine, we will then, at the end of the day, not fulfill our tasks. Not doing the good completely means we're doing half good, and half good is not good. It's actually evil, according to Emmanuel. So the time will come when we'll be called upon to report on the edifying usage of the opportunity granted to us. He says it's okay to ask, and it's natural to always receive because God is so loving. But the law of God will ask us to say what we've done. What have you done with the money we've given you? Oh, you've spent only for yourself. What have you done with the, the health you've given? Oh, you used only for yourself and you didn't take care of money. Okay. What have you done with the titles we've gave you, given you? You've used only to get more money. You didn't use it to help in the pro bono works. Aha. Uh -huh. Some people tell me, Vanessa, if you use that time that you do spiritism for your professional life, you would get a million dollars. And I say, you know, you don't know. Maybe I passed a million dollars already, not in the material realm. But I don't do this for the material purposes. So for us, we need to ask if we are using the resources we have at hand, all of them, for the benefit of everyone, maximizing the gain to the general good or not. So he says we need to meditate on the responsibilities. So today we have the opportunity to help, to learn, to love, to forgive, to sublimate, and to redeem. Let us then refrain from wasting time and fulfill our tasks. Question to all of us as our homework. What are the tasks we are not fulfilling? This is not a reprimand. It's an evaluation. We all need to go through evaluations, as St. Augustine says. Every night we ask ourselves, could I have done better? What have I not done? I did great on this, this, and the other. But I still can improve on that. Like an athlete, the athlete evaluates and says, you know, I can still improve on this. You go to a piano lesson, and the good teacher is going to say, you know, you still need to tweak here and there. So 
we need to do the same with ourselves not to put us down but to say tomorrow i will get to a new level of performance of the soul shall we so let us evaluate what we are doing our responsibilities and fulfill them because most often our world world suffers because people are not fulfilling their responsibilities to the fullest and remember though we are individuals we have collective responsibilities if you belong to spiritist organizations you your responsibility to the collective is also there and it's not about what you think you can do when we work as a group we need to get to the common to the common goal and work together to achieve it okay so this is our reflection for today right so so let us then rejoice in the hope that we're always progressing but shed some light and evaluate the responsibilities hmm? how am i doing what can i adjust how can i take another step towards the development of my soul and do it with joy never with a burden no let's not feel it as a burden but an invitation to excellence shall we friends what a joy isn't it and we can almost feel this is the countdown for christmas joy to the world we can hear it's coming joy to the world the excellent model is has come already is here with us mm -hmm. let heavens and nature sing right and sing the joy the hope and the courage to do what we gotta do after all we're co-creators we got what can we do but to co-create co-create with wisdom and love in our hearts this is hope and light here at kardec radio nourishing our souls so friends a big hug to you and until tomorrow god willing